a few of the girls who were five to a room to be able to afford this room at the Beverly Hills London. And uh, a bunch of the girls signed up for eHarmony. And I got signed up too. a friend had signed me up. I was, so I wrote to eHarmony and I said, you know, I, I'm not interested. I'm a recent widow, blah, blah, blah. They basically wrote back to me and said, uh, no, uh, we signed you up and <laughs> you keep your heart open and, but it's, a, you know, it's a trial, blah, blah. So I would get home and I would have a glass of wine and look at the would-be suitors and didn't think anything of it. Went and told all my yoga students about it who found it funny. So a couple months later uh, in October, so uh, Bob had been gone about seven months and uh, one of my students said to me, uh, you want to meet someone? And he was a wonder kid scientist at NASA in his 20s. And he was sucking a uh, like a CBD lollipop. I'll never forget it. <laughs> he goes, you want to meet someone? And I said, no. And he goes, well, he's a really nice guy. He can't find uh, a nice girl. And you're a nice girl. I said, no, I'm not interested. And he goes, well, he runs and he stretches. He runs and he lifts weights and he needs to stretch. And you know how to stretch. <laughs> and I said, no. And he goes, well, he's on eHarmony. Why don't you go check him out? So he gave me the name. I went home, I scrolled through it and there he was. And he had given me two messages because I didn't respond to any of these people. So I read the messages and one's like, well, he goes, you're way out of my league, which didn't hurt his chances. And he said, but maybe we could get together and go for a bike ride or something okay. like that. I thought, well, all right. Maybe. So I answered his letter. We wrote back and forth for a couple of weeks. And then he said, could I call you? And I got real nervous because I thought, oh, I had gotten convinced I was just uh, talking to my computer. So <laughs> I was, you know, and in the meantime, I was still, uh, you know, I was still such a it's sad. Not real at that um, point. <laughs> right. You know, this was all diversion because I, all I was, I had four hours off a week. I was working ICU. I was working cardiac rehab and I was working, teaching exercise and then trying to keep the house and the kids together. And so this kind of became a diversion to to talk to my computer at night. Yeah. I said, yeah, okay, fine. So he called and we got into talking. He talked about, you know, the end of his marriage and, you know, loneliness. And I went into uh, my loss of Bob and he said, so he goes, are you really ready for anything? I said, I'm ready for a bike ride. Yeah. And I said, that would be good. And that's how I met uh, my new husband, Ray. Um, you know, a couple of weeks after we had just been seeing each other to have dinner, to go work out. Yeah, uh, he yoga class. Um, he said, you know, we might have something here. And he said, do you think you ever want to get married again? I said, no, it hurts too much. And he goes, oh, I agree with you with that. And I said, no, I said, I don't mean it that way. I said, we left on a good and loving note. I said, it was just, I didn't know it was possible to feel so much pain and not die. Right. <laughs> and, uh, he goes, so you regret it? I said, no, I don't regret it. And I said, no, it was worth it. I'd do it again. Even knowing how the dance would turn out, I would still do the dance. And I said, no. Um, I said, he taught me what love is, what sacrifice is. Um, and I said, total unconditional. I said, no, no, I don't regret it. He goes, well, maybe I could make you change your mind. I said, you just said you don't want to get married again. <laughs> and I said, and he goes, well, you've given me the challenge. And I said, well, maybe I can make you want to get married again. And we both laughed it off and said, you know what? We're two damaged people. Let's just go for the damn bike ride and have some fun. <laughs> right. Um, so I came down to, you know, those weekends with Ray, because I was working all week and most weekends. So I really only saw him on Sundays. And then we'd talk every night. Um, I came to a point where when I was with him, life didn't suck. <laughs> and you know what? That was okay because life sucked the rest of the time. Yeah. And I, I'm sure, you know, that energy you have to give to your children to say, okay, we're taking this on the chin. We're going to go on living. We have to go on living. That's what dad wants. That's what life demands. This is life. And I remember my son took it. He was like, uh, his faith was very shaken. And he said, well, you know, why are these bad people alive? And dad's not. And I said, because that's life yeah. and it's not fair. And it sucks. I said, but there are moments you're going to feel. I said, the day you were born, I said, the day all four of us were all together laughing on TV, I said, you know, just all happy and nothing wrong going on. I said, they're precious moments that are going to make you want to live. They're worth living for. Um, so Ray came into our lives. And of course, there was that to deal with, too. And we decided we got married. We had only known each other for maybe five, six months. And it okay. was one of those points where he was going to renew his lease on the condo he was in because he was a contractor with NASA at that point he was going to a different job 
And do we do that or do we shack up? And he said, what's that teaching your kids? And he said that I don't respect their mother enough to marry her. And he said, we have everything we need to make a good life together. Mm. And I said, do you feel about me the way you feel about me? Now I'm a very loving person. You know, I fall in love with my patients. I fall in love with everybody very easily. I love people. I said, I said, I was 25 when I met Bob, you know, pumping hormones. And mm. he was a hero to me right up to the end. He was my hero. And I said, it's a different feeling. And I didn't know how I felt about Bob John. <laughs> we only had a few months left. I didn't realize I had a love so profound that literally it was mm. part. And I said, but I know what I have for you is a deep and abiding love. I know it's one that we can build on. And I said, and in five, 10 years, we'll see where it goes. I said, and he goes, huh? I said, true. I said, marriage grows. And I said, I had a good marriage. I said, it grows. And I said, you, you get better together. And I said, how we feel about each other now isn't how we're going to feel in 10 years. And he validates that now. Yeah. He's married now 10 years. And um, so we decided we'd get married. I know friends were concerned until they met him and they said, oh yeah, this is okay. Yeah. You two are good for each other. You know, my one <laughs> girlfriend was afraid I'd take off with a, a trainer at the gym. I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, <laughs> were some ugly people some neighbors um elderly neighbors said boy she didn't waste any time <sighs> and i remember turning to the one neighbor when he said well you sure didn't and i said you know i have kids to raise and i said i have a life to live i said i met another lonely person i said and we get each other and we love and care for one another and i said and until you've walked in my shoes sir don't you judge me <laughs> they said that to you he said that to you yeah, you had no filter. Yeah. Um, but I knew people would say that behind my back too. People can just be ugly. It's like, I don't even bother with a lot of socialization. Oh my God. But workers understood. They knew I was a care, a caregiver for a long time and they all were so kind about it. Um, so then, yeah. So then, uh, I remarried 